All right, hello my friends, and welcome back to another Brotato class guide. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're covering the Saver. So the Saver, I think the most important thing to understand for this character is how the income mechanics in the game work. You get 15 harvesting and 1% damage for every 25 materials you currently have. You start with a piggy bank, which increases your currently held materials by 20% at the beginning of every wave, but items cost 50% more, so each material you have is effectively 33% less valuable. Basically, the Saver gets 20% additional money, but 33% less value for each amount of materials that it has. So you end up behind on your economy curve compared to other characters. That being said, you get some additional harvesting. And unlike other economic focused characters, you don't have any penalty to the amount of materials that enemies drop. So you're going to end up ahead on the economy on the level curve while being behind on the economy curve. You also have to use a certain amount of your materials to generate more money and to hold for additional damage. In the early game, this is going to be a very inefficient way to use your materials because 25 for 1% damage will be a very bad ratio. In the late game, though, this will end up being a very strong ratio, especially because they're also generating more materials for you. What this means is that the character is very late game loaded your early game is very weak and your late game is very strong so we need a weapon that lets us mitigate the late game problems now or the early game problems now the thing about the saver is that there's also a hidden downside that's not listed in this text but is on this screen and that's this garbage pile of weapons if you have watched my weapon tier list which is either about to go up or has gone up just before this i'm not 100 percent sure what order i'm posting them in you will have seen that I have listed almost every one of these weapons in D or C tier at best, with the one exception of the weapon that we're going to use, the spear. I think there's a couple other builds that you can go, but the spear is the one that most helps mitigate the downsides of the saver. Some other builds that are worth considering, you could go laser gun, sell it, and just go into SMGs or shotguns as you roll into them. You could go it taser and lean into the income, but this relies pretty heavily on fighting a scared sausage to allow you to spread burning effect for the elemental damage build. Or you could go for the most fun but riskiest build and build thief dagger, which gives you lots of income but also is very hard to make work and requires very precise movement. In the interest of showing off a consistent and workable strategy for this character, we're going to go with the spear and jump in for the saver. The saver, basically, it's all about compound interest. So if you are, and statistically, based on who watches gaming videos on YouTube, uh, you are, if you're in college or like just exiting college entering your first job this is actually kind of a useful object lesson on how um mutual funds work all right here we're just going to grab some melee damage and then we'll take some attack speed as well i would love to some harvesting but these are also really important stats for us harvesting would be incredible though if you roll five harvesting you should take it because that will bring you to 21 and at 21, your harvesting starts increasing by two per level instead of one per level, so that can get you a ton of extra harvesting early. If you don't roll melee damage or attack speed, you should roll for harvesting, um, and you want to take them in order, harvesting, attack speed, then melee damage. Here, I'm just going to buy a spear and keep rolling, and we're looking for more spears. Nothing here that we want in particular, so I'm just going to roll for another spear. This is... A really solid shop. I'm considering the melee damage on the charcoal, but I don't want to decrease our harvesting. And claw tree, I think we really just want to keep rolling for more spears. We're going to lock the spear, and of course we'll lock the tree, because tree is just really good. Having three spears locked, and or three spears and a fourth locked, is slightly better than you expect on the saver, I think, because your items are so expensive. And spear, one of the downsides of it is that it has a very high base cost in the shop. So you are actually not that likely to be able to get this many spears off your first shopping trip. We got a little, a little lucky in this build though, so I will take it. Here I am just going to take a little more attack speed and then buy a spear and roll. We're looking to lock another spear, which we were able to do. Perfect. And I'll save this money. It's going to get us $4 from our piggy bank. Ooh, 
one thing to keep in mind on the saver is that every time you buy damage, you percentage damage, you decrease your percentage damage based on the cost of that item. So usually you want to avoid buying percentage damage. You also, of course, natively increase it, which typically means you want to avoid it. Oh, come on. Why? Why? Why must you taunt me? <laughs> All right, well, that's fine. We'll take the harvesting here to get over 20. <laughs> And we'll buy a spear and the tree. And I'm going to roll looking for more spears. That's perfect. I will also... So the bait is pretty interesting uh, for this character. Like I was talking about, when you buy percentage damage, you decrease your damage based on your currently held materials. That said, the bait is a very efficient way to buy percent damage. So we lose two and gain eight. We also gain a little bit of extra money just from the aliens that spawn. And spears are very good against them, as you will have seen if you saw my fisherman video. So I'm going to lock the bait. I think it's still pretty good for this character. Definitely working on killing this tree. We got the extra trees for a reason. Notice that we're getting several levels because we have harvesting and no reduced income from enemies. So unlike, for example, the streamer, all right, this time we can kill the loot alien. Come on. I know we got you. Yeah. Unlike, for example, the streamer or uh, any other economy, fo most other economy focused characters, the saver actually will increase their level gain compared to other characters. All right, we're going to grab the baby gecko for sure, because as we pull in materials, we increase our damage. It's less important than it is for the streamer, but still very important. And here I'm going to just take more harvesting. Getting that up early is really nice. 8% damage is the same as having 200 materials in our inventory. So even though we generate this normally, it's still really good to buy it buy this spear and I'm actually going to not buy the bait yet because I want to be getting my piggy bank rolling so we'd like to have a decent amount of money in our bank. I will throw in a reroll though just to see if we can get any valuable items here and in fact I'm going to lock the beanie. Do I want the helmet? I think we'll pass on the helmet. It's especially good to lock items on these characters that increase the cost of items because the amount that item cost increases every shop level is going to go up that much more. So when you lock an item, you save that much more money. Locking on this kind of character is inherently good, I think. Um, I talked about this a lot in my mutant class guide. So if you haven't watched that one, it's also worth watching for a discussion of that. But overall, the... The principle is that locking is really good when you are decreasing the amount that the item goes up in price more. Um, I wouldn't mind health regeneration, but I think it's too valuable to just keep taking damage here. And then I'm just going to buy these two and we'll sit on 200. I can throw in a reroll and still be at 200, so we get to lock in this spear. Do I want triangle of power? We do get 20% damage and an armor, but I think that's probably not worth it for this character. We are already building percentage damage, and Triangle of Power is very risky to take. You're going to take a lot of damage from these guys. That's okay, though. We'll tank a bunch and then go pick up some consumables off the ground. I could certainly have dodged better there, but luckily we had enough HP to survive that. We do need some ways to heal, though, because uh, currently we have basically no defensive stats. Although the spears, being a primitive weapon, are providing us enough maximum HP to survive these early waves, even without defensive stats, which is one reason I think they're so good on this character. It lets you build economy and offensive stats more aggressively. Definitely going to take this. The minus luck is certainly a downside, but three melee damage is three melee damage, and I will take 10% attack speed. That's really important, and I'll take four melee damage to make sure we continue to one-shot things. Now upgrade this. Combine and upgrade this. We're actually at significantly higher on the weapon curve than you sort of expect to be at this point. And I'm going to take this mushroom as well just for some health regeneration. I'm taking that over the beanie at the moment 
because I really want some way to heal. Even just a little bit of healing is really valuable. And we're gonna, I'm going to throw in a reroll here to lock this spear because we can still, still have a decent chance of rolling something like a spear and that's very good. Butterfly, I think I'll also take because even though we would probably prefer consumable healing and regeneration to lifesteal, Butterfly is just still very efficient even though it costs more. Do I want the Garden? Without any form of bonus consumable healing, I think buying the Garden is not worth it. But because we just like locking items, I'm going to lock the Butterfly. The big thing that I need at this point is really just defensive stats, maximum HP primarily, and a little bit more regeneration, but our damage is looking really solid, we've got a decent amount of harvesting. More certainly wouldn't hurt, of course, but the amount we have is fine. Because our damage is really good, I can let these eggs hatch and kill the aliens for additional income, kill the big aliens for additional income. I mention this in most of my videos, but when you let these guys hatch, they're worth more money. Trying to pick up as much as we can here to make sure that we hit a higher amount. Do I want harvesting, damage, melee damage, dodge? I think in this case, I'm actually just going to take harvesting. I think we're early enough that that will pay for itself pretty soon. I'm going to grab this spear and the beanie. And I think we can actually get away with going into the next wave with 400 in the bank. We don't need a ton of stats. We have a horde on wave 11, which will be much easier for us than an elite. So it's important to check what is incoming. And because we're going spears, a horde wave will not pose too much of a challenge because spears have a ton of native pierce. So a horde wave isn't particularly more difficult than a normal wave for us. Whereas an elite wave could really be a problem before we have enough defensive stats or maximum HP. Uh, especially attack speed is going to be really important for killing elites. Because the spears... A spear's damage is very good in terms of base damage. We are building percentage damage just by virtue of being the saver. But the spear needs attack speed. Um, when it has such low attack speed base, like a spear attacks every two seconds or something at base, the amount of absolute reduction in time that you get from reducing, from increasing your percentage attack speed is higher. The, like, the longer it is between every attack, that was kind of an awkward way to say that, but the longer it is between every attack, the longer a period of time a percentage of that time is. So 10% of two seconds is bigger than 10% of one second is what I'm really saying here, which means it is important to buy percentage attack speed on items like the spear that have very low base attack speed. I'm going to grab armor here over crit chance, even though it's level two, because we really do need some defensive stats. And I'm going to... Do I want this speed? Yeah, I'll take this speed because that will let us buy items that decrease our speed without hurting ourselves too much. Buy a spear, buy a butterfly. I think I'll probably stay on 500 here. So here's an item that I have mentioned as being particularly bad, but we have been buying speed specifically to be able to afford to buy this bad item, the padding. Padding is good only on this character because you do actually want to store a tremendous amount of materials in the bank because it gives you damage. And when it gives you damage, it can also give you maximum HP. That said, I'm gonna wait one wave to buy it. We're gonna lock it in the lemonade and then go into wave nine with 500 in the bank. But padding will end up being tons of maximum HP and we buy speed very aggressively on this character for the express purpose of being able to buy padding without ruining our entire build whenever it shows up. Even the one point of consumable healing from the Lemonade is going to be a lot of additional sustain for this character build. When you're getting a little pressured like this, it, and you're playing the Spear build, it can be really worth it to stay in the corner, because then all the enemies will come at you from the same direction, so your Spears will hit more of them at once. Spears are worst in the center of the arena. 
Um, and also when you're using spears, you want to have manual targeting on so you can make sure you're hitting more enemies at the same time, or you can use them to clear a path. If you're really having trouble, move along the edge of the arena, attacking at sort of this angle in front of you, and you'll clear yourself a path, being able to avoid enemies. If you attack at like kind of a 20 degree angle off your direction of movement. All right, let's definitely take this garden and I'll take some more armor here. I don't really need any of these. I'm gonna roll and our harvesting is okay. I think at this point, I'm actually just gonna keep increasing my lifesteal. We'll buy this padding and we're gonna look to maintain somewhere around 700 in the bank. So we can afford to buy lemonade and the medical turret. Then we're gonna roll once looking for some additional items. Because I found a wheelbarrow, I'm going to buy it over trying to maintain 700 in the bank, because obviously it's going to give me money by itself, so we can afford to lose out on a little bit of piggy bank money in exchange for the wheelbarrow money. I have no crit chance yet, but the tentacle will probably be valuable later, because we're intending to probably build some crit chance, so I'll lock the, the tentacle. It can be a decent supplement to our healing, as well as giving us a little bit of crit chance. And once our attack speed and damage is high, we need to boost our crit chance. Typically, in most for most characters, you want to build your damage stats in order attack speed, flat damage, then percentage damage, then crit chance. Um, this character builds percentage damage by itself, so we want to build attack speed, flat damage, then crit chance. One thing that's kind of fun is we're gaining HP over the course of the wave just by increasing our currently held materials and the padding is increasing our HP as well as our damage, as well as uh, the saver's natural ability increasing our damage. Trying to make sure I'm picking up as much of this money as I can. And you want to make sure that the enemies are stacking in lines so that you can kill them with your spears all at once. Definitely grabbing attack speed here. That's super important for this character. We'll take the tentacle. Roll again. And while our speed will definitely decrease, obviously warrior helmet is incredible for this character. I also really want mastery. The question is, do I want to decrease my currently held money to 600 to get mastery and the helmet. I think given that it is wave 11, we're about to hit a horde, I'm going to do that. It will decrease my percent damage, but increasing my uh, armor, HP, and flat damage by this much will increase our wave clear and survivability a ton. Against a horde wave, the spears are basically ideal. There's probably no weapon you would rather have against a horde. Because of course it's going to hit everything on the on the path towards you. So we can just stay in the corner here and all the enemies are going to come at us. The spears are just going to attack them. The rib cage guys might be able to get to us. So I am going to keep moving, but for the most part, we can we can maintain a very powerful bubble of safety by just attacking in one direction with our spears. I do want to make sure I'm killing these trees, of course, though, to increase our income further. Tanking a couple hits there, but let's clear out all these enemies. Make my way towards our garden to heal back to full. Did leave a lot of money on the ground there, but we're still in pretty good shape. I'm going to grab some more armor, and here... I'll just take some HP regeneration, I think. It's only a level 2, but a little HP regeneration is really nice in melee builds to supplement your healing from any other sources you might have, mostly from consumables. Losing 2 melee damage definitely is painful, but increasing our maximum HP is pretty important. I think I'm going to pass on the schmoop, though, just because it costs 200, so we also lose 8% damage for it. That said, I'll definitely take the defective steroids. We're going to roll here. 
Will bag pay for itself? It need we need to find five boxes before it pays for itself. I think it won't, so I'm not gonna grab that. The little frog I think is also a little bit late here, so I'm just gonna keep re-rolling. We're looking for some items that have sort of more impact at this point. Black belt again, I think it's a little bit late. Let's roll again, but mastery I'll definitely take. Head injury is worth noting as a as an item that is usually bad on this character, so we basically lose 4% damage to gain 6% damage. Not worth spending 100 on. Coupon. So it costs more, but also it's going to reduce the item costs by more. If you can get it early, it's going to be really good. Later on, it's more of a trade-off because it's going to decrease your damage more and cost you more from the piggy bank. I think at this point, it's still worth buying the coupon. I will check later on how much that saved us. But for now, I'm just going to go into this next wave with 700 in the bank. I will say that I think the, the most fun way to play this character is with Thief Daggers, because you can end up generating enormous amounts of money. Um, and precise builds are just generally really fun. But Thief Dagger as a weapon is already pretty tough to use, and on this character that is pretty weak, it ends up being worse than just going for the very classic, very strong Spears build. Did it increase my damage before we fight an elite? I'm feeling like my damage is a little low at this point. But of course, as we continue to gain money, we'll continue to gain damage. Manually target that tree down. Up to 1400. Definitely grabbing this life steal. That's awesome. And here, I'll take this 9% dodge. We can start building our dodge up, and it's a level 3. Um, and then similarly, we can start building our crit chance up because we already have a tentacle that can help us heal. So sunglasses will work out well. The alien tongue is often valuable on this kind of character that wants that actually really wants to pick up materials during the wave. That said, for a hundred, I just don't think it's worth the expenditure. Let's keep rolling. I'll definitely take coffee. I will take this shady potion, and I'm gonna try to keep a th almost a thousand in the bank. I think that's going to be really good. We're getting a ton now from our piggy bank. It's been worth 700 and now it's going to be worth 900. You really want to be maximizing that piggy bank. Don't go nuts on it, of course, but it's worth saving some money in order to generate more money. And remember that the worst case scenario for your money is being spent at a ratio of 25 to 1 on percentage damage, which is a pretty bad floor. Like, that's that's a usually a very bad ratio for money. But given that you are holding it to generate more money while you're doing that, the fact that it is also generating combat value is pretty nice. I'm using a combination here of various forms of healing, lifesteal, and HP regeneration. I think spears are okay with lifesteal. Normally I suggest that melee characters go for consumable healing and HP regeneration over lifesteal, but spears, because they're so long-ranged and will hit multiple targets, I think that the lifesteal can be fine on them. I, I am just mostly going to buy whatever shows up in the shop for this type of character. Crown is going to be really good. Our harvesting is already quite high, so that's going to increase our harvesting by a lot. Definitely taking the attack speed. Finn will be excellent. We would love some more speed, and lifesteal is great. Let's keep rolling. We're going to try to stay at a thousand in the bank, so I'm just going to grab this spear. I'll throw in one more reroll here and lock this other spear. Injection here would be almost negative damage and reduce our max HP, so definitely not taking that. One reason I'm trying to keep a thousand in the bank also is that I have not found that much max HP and the padding is providing a, a significant portion of our max HP. So maintaining a reasonable level of health from the padding is really important to us. 
As always, wave 14, you want to make sure that you are staying near the slug aliens after you kill them so that you are clearing the goobers as they spawn. <laughs> I've had a couple people say, like, Rawr, that's not what the aliens are called. And to them I say, tough. <laughs> Go read the wiki more, nerd. Didn't manage to get that loot alien at the end. Um, this incendiary turret will not be particularly useful, so I'm just going to recycle it. It's worth more, uh, worth more materials that way. Crit chance is actually also valuable for us for healing at this point. So while I wouldn't mind armor or dodge, I might take crit chance. I think, though, I'm going to take dodge. Once you can stack your dodge up towards the cap, it becomes way more valuable. I'm going to grab this spear and roll again and grab this spear and the bowler hat. Bowler hat does reduce our damage, but 15 luck and 18 harvesting is just too good to pass up. And we can stay at 1100 going into wave 15. It's a horde wave, so we're going to get a lot of money from it. And also now our lifesteal is actually pretty good at... Um, over 10%. 10% is usually the marker for where you want to be on lifesteal in order to reliably sustain. For a melee build, even with the long range of the spears, I think we'll probably want a little more lifesteal to be able to count on it. Because 10% uh, lifesteal is good if you're using slingshots or SMGs or something that really synergizes with lifesteal. The spears are fine with lifesteal, don't get me wrong. Like, you can see how many enemies we're hitting at once. But... They're not as powerful with lifesteal as some of the ranged weapon options. That said, they sure do clear horde enemies effectively. You can see how quickly we're sweeping this entire level. Which is also resulting in a ton of income. up to almost 2,000 in the bank. I will definitely accept minus four harvesting for a little more lifesteal and regeneration. I don't think we need this 3% lifesteal though, so I'm gonna reroll this looking for something a little better. I'll, I'll take 10% attack speed. It's not amazingly better, but it's still good. Alienize is pretty interesting when you're building padding and stacking money, because you can end up with quite high health, especially if we find a second padding. Um, so I think I actually am gonna buy it even though it's not going to do a ton right now. This is a strategy that's particularly valuable in endless mode, where you stack padding and alienize to have a really powerful scaling option for damage. But even for this character, I think it's good because it scales based on our health, which we're increasing with our padding, and also our percentage damage, which we're increasing with our money. So ever, as we gain money, the alienize are going to gain significant amounts of damage. Here I will take this spear and... Do I want us to just sit on 1600? I think I do, actually. That way we're going to be getting, um, what's that, 200 plus another 100 plus another 20. So 320 materials from our piggy bank. It's going to be really... That's, that's obviously a lot to gain just for hanging out doing nothing. It's the virtues of capitalism in action. Let's continue to clear this wave. Always hunt down the brain bugs on wave 16 because they will buff the enemies. And while they're not super dangerous individually, if too many of the enemies get buffed, they can really be a problem, especially if they start if they manage to buff a bunch of chargers. Because they buff both their they buff their move speed damage but also their health so they can start taking additional hits so like you saw that charger tanked a critical hit from one of our spears which nothing else has been able to survive thanks to the buff from the the brain bug here i'm gonna re-roll and just continue to increase my dodge the crit chance would be really nice but i'd i'd really want to get my dodge higher up 
Let's go to a level four spear for sure. Roll this and I'll just take this mastery and we'll sit on 1800 going into wave 17. We've got great melee damage, which is being increased a lot by our percentage damage. Our max HP is not amazing. I would really love to see a little bit more of that, or we can just continue to increase our materials. If we find another padding, that will, of course, solve our max HP problems. It's nice we got the hardest elite. Um, less difficult for this build than for many, because we've got spears, so we can kill the summons more easily than many other builds can, but the this elite is the hardest because it, it runs away from you and it summons. So what we're going to do is run around and manually target it down to try to kill it quickly before it can build up too many layers of ablative meat in between it and us. Let's break that tree. Break that tree. And pick up a bunch of money. We're up to 2,700 in the bank. Sure, I'll definitely take an octopus. We want our crit chance to go up, but so losing this is bad. But like I said, Increasing our max HP is incredibly valuable at this point, and our lifesteal up at 16% means that we don't really have to worry about lifesteal at all anymore. I'll take some melee damage so we can kill the bosses a little faster. Another padding, that's awesome. Um, fertilizer will unfortunately not pay for itself at this point, so I'm going to pass on it, but I will combine and buy another spear. We're going to try to sit on, let's say, 2200 Max HP capped at 121, but that's going to be decreased as I buy the handcuffs to somewhere around like 110, because uh, as we spend this money, the amount that we're getting from the padding will increase, and then the lock happens after that, as I learned last time. So it's still worth it, I think, but it's going to lock our, our HP at like, yeah, 113. 113 is totally fine, though. I'm going to lock this goat skull in the shop and move on to the next round. So we're not going to end up with the ridiculous levels of HP that you sometimes will if you are going for a padding build. Because we bought the handcuffs and locked our maximum HP at 113. But I think it's still worth it for 8 melee damage. If this was an endless mode run, obviously we would never have bought that, but... Um, for just trying to win level 20, it is, I think, more valuable to have the damage. The main thing that can get us at this point is the enemies just outpacing our healing with tons of burst, and so if we can just burst them down before that can possibly happen, then it's going to be very hard for us to lose this run. Like I said, this is an early game focused or a late game focused character, so the main challenge is mitigating the very weak early game, and then once you get to the late game, things get totally fine. Take some attack speed, and take some more attack speed. Let's also... Yeah, I will lose some luck to grab HP regeneration. Actually, I guess our, our maximum HP is just going to keep scaling as we continue to hold materials, so I don't need to worry about buying alien magic here cap my speed for some range and regeneration. I don't think we need to do that. Let's just get some melee damage, roll again, and get some melee damage at crit chance, and we'll sit on 2200. I think that's fine. 2200 gives us, what's that, 440 from the piggy bank. So I think we're going to end up with something around... Three, four thousand materials gained just from the piggy bank alone by the end of the run. And we haven't even been trying too hard to maximize it, but I think you should avoid trying too hard to maximize it for this character. The real thing about this character is mostly just to understand like where the how the game's income 
health works and where the power curves on each character and each weapon are, and to try to overlay the power curves so that your weapons are strongest when your character is weakest, so that they can keep you above the incoming damage curve from the enemies. Just going to grab attack speed here, and <laughs> baby with a beard would be fun if we were a ranged build, but we're not, so let's roll hunting trophy. I don't think we're going to be able to generate any money from that. Certainly not enough to matter for the final wave. I think, actually, I'm just going to go into this wave with 3400 Let's not bother to buying anything. We'll see how much money we can get for the final boss battle. We've got 4000 in the bank already, so feeling pretty good about this one. Did stand on all of those attacks and all those attacks, so I need to be a little bit careful here. Trying to gain some HP while staying next to this guy to avoid taking too much damage. Staying in the within the inner circle of his attack is the most important thing for this guy. Kill that guy and now we can heal the full. I definitely played this fight a little bit sloppy, but I because I thought that our damage would be high enough to just one-shot the aliens, but once I saw we were taking a little bit of too much damage, we were able to just play a little bit more carefully and move in to dodge more effectively. Ended up with 163 out of 113 maximum HP, thanks to the paddings, and very, very high damage, plus 200% damage because of how much money we had. All right, my friends, that will do it for the saver. So I hope this was helpful and that you enjoyed the video. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, or even if not, please feel free to leave a comment, rate the video. Uh, both of those things help a ton with the algorithm. And you can subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Daily videos will be up for the foreseeable future. So plenty more to look forward to. Cheers, my friends. I'll catch you next time.